Check it out. A big chunk of brain coral. The J Tunnel here. And today for Beach Coming, I guess we're gonna be talking about brain coral. And uh, this, I'm guessing this is brain coral. It just so happens we have an expert with us today about corals, who grows corals. And I'm gonna be able to ask her, Dr. Keisha Barr. Now, this I'm guessing came from some coral reef out in the ocean somewhere, uh, obviously. And then maybe a storm knocked it loose and it washed up maybe for decades. But what I'm noticing about this and why I think it's been out there a while is because there's gooseneck barnacles on here. And uh, so that tells me it's been out there a while. Uh, it also has some interesting colors here. You'll see like green. Maybe that's like algae that's been uh, growing on it. And so let me look at the bottom side. Yeah, so maybe it's just been rolling around out there for a long time. So uh, with that, let's go talk to Keisha Barr. She's down the beach right now, and I'm gonna ask her what this is. I think she's gonna be excited about it. Let's go. Whoa, this is a huge piece of brain coral. Wow, so it looks like it's been at least dead for a little bit of time because we do see that there's some erosion that's happened on the coral um, and also there is some algae that's growing on here well we don't have any brain coral really close to us here but this likely came from an offshore coral reef maybe from the flower gardens uh, there are a lot of corals of this type, the spring coral at the flower gardens. Actually, some of them can get even bigger than this. They can be as big as a small minivan. And they're insane because they're essentially bigger than I am. So this thing is a, a few hundred years old, just looking at the size of it. But it might have come from a bigger colony that has broken off, has broken off from there. I guess one of the biggest questions is, is how the heck did it get here? Like this is a huge piece. And being able to come this far, maybe 100 miles offshore, that's the closest brain corals that I know of. But there's also some of those in Mexico as well. Um, but those are also really far away. So it's really interesting that we find this on the shore here. And it's a really big treasure because a lot of people don't think of finding corals here in the coastal bend. So just being able to see this and see such a large piece is just amazing. And it's such a great shape too. You can see on the back side here, this is the bottom of the coral. So this is the old pieces of the coral and where it has been growing from. And then as it grows over time, it lays down all these different layers. So all these layers are the different um, time series or essentially how much it's grown over time. And we look at these coral skeletons and we can actually date it and look and try to understand how old this is. And from the skeleton, we can determine essentially what the, the conditions of the ocean were. What were the temperatures? What was the pH of the ocean, the salinity? And that can tell us more about what our ocean used to look like. So corals are really cool fossils um, that are able to document and keep record of what the conditions of the oceans were at that time. And also there are living organisms that support the, the reefs and fish around them and other organisms that are associated with the reef. So this thing is really cool. It's actually one of my favorite corals, a brain coral, because it looks just like a brain. Us biologists, we kind of name things based on what they look like. Um, so I really think this is an amazing piece and such a cool find here on the coastal shores of Texas. So, wow, very cool. I'm excited. Also today on, during our beach combing, we found these corals here on the beach. These are actually corals that we do find here in the coastal waters of Texas. This is the Northern Star Coral, or the scientific name is Estrangia Paculata. So we have this coral in our lab because we like to see how the coral does respond to changing environments or when we change the temperature. Um, so we can go check that out. Let's go see what those look like when they're alive. Okay, Keisha and I made it off the beach and now we're gonna go into the coral lab and check it out and see what they actually do here at the Heart Research. Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to the lab, the Coral Reef and Ocean Health Lab. We have here the corals that we collected on the beach yesterday. This is the Northern Star Coral, which we have been studying for the past 
two years in our jetties here in Corpus Christi. We're trying to understand how this coral is able to survive these very dynamic swings in the environment that we have here in the coastal bend. We've also noticed that this coral has survived the Texas freeze that we had a few years ago. So we have this coral here in captivity trying to understand how it's able to survive these dynamic changes that we have in our waters. We also have here in captivity another star coral. This is called the mountainous star coral. This is commonly found throughout the Caribbean and is very important for us to understand uh, the level of corals that we have uh, throughout the Gulf and the Caribbean. It's also found at the flower garden banks as well. Also in captivity here, we have another endangered species of coral. It's called the staghorn coral. And this one is at very, very low levels throughout the Caribbean. So we're really trying to understand why is this species, the staghorn coral, not doing so well? And there's some other species of corals, such as the star corals, that are doing a little bit better. And our goal here of having these corals in captivity is to really understand how tolerant are they and what differences in terms of our environmental stressors are impacting which species more or less. And all of this information is used to help with the management agencies who need this information to better understand and manage these coral reef ecosystems. So for example, we have the mountainous star coral right now, we're doing experiments on those, and we're trying to understand how different levels of dredge sediment, so the dredging that we do in order to maintain our ports, how that will impact this coral. If it's tolerant of that dredge the dredge sediment, or if it's not, and how much sediment can be suspended at one time and for how long. And we're trying to define those thresholds so that the management agencies that manage the dredging operations can better know when they should or should not dredge and for how long so it doesn't have impacts on these sensitive coral species. We also have corals beyond the Gulf. We have some corals here in captivity that are from Hawaii. And with these corals, we have uh, three different species. We have our rice coral, which are here in the front. We also have the finger coral, which is endemic to Hawaii. And we have um, a mushroom coral here as well. Uh, these mushroom corals are my personal favorite corals that we have in captivity because they are very different from other corals that we have, where they just have one single polyp or one mouth. So for example, all the other corals that I've been showing you, like this one here, have, can have hundreds or thousands of mouths, and this mushroom coral only has one mouth. So it's a very different type of coral. Corals are really weird. They come in different shapes, sizes, colors, forms, but they all are shared uh, traits among them. So we like to study a, a variety of those. The corals from Hawaii that we have here, we're trying to look at how different uh, chemistries of our water might be impacting the corals and how they grow. So we've been studying these for the past five years and we're really excited to understand more about how corals grow and maintain these beautiful structures that they have. Okay, hey man, that's cool. I guess uh, corals I don't really hear that much about. So um, the fact that we're doing something here at the Heart Research Institute and is going to applied science, like they're actually using the information on uh, where people are dredging so it doesn't impact coral reefs. That's pretty cool. Okay, I'm heading out of here. Uh, you know, I got to get out back on the beach. Uh, I don't want them to think I'm going to be working in the office all the time. All right, we'll talk to you all later. Bye.